Hi everyone, um, it's me, Maria Duffy. Um, I graduated from high school um, last year, so in 2020, and um, I'm a freshman college student at the Catholic University of America in DC. Um, I'm sure many of you, and probably have met many of you, but um, if you don't know me, hi, nice to meet you. Um, and so we're gonna, I'm gonna be doing the third week of Advent reflection. Um, and so this week, the this third week of Advent um, is a week of joy. Um, so if you have your Advent wreath near you, you can go ahead and light the pink candle for this week. Um, yeah, so this week is focused a lot about joy. Um, and so let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, come. Lord, I just ask that you, um, you fill us this week with, with joy, um, just as we're focused on this week. I pray that you, um, you help us to see all the joy in our life, despite the hurting and broken world that we see around us. Um, I ask that we're fully able to recognize and rejoice in you, even in the midst of our sorrow and suffering. And Mother Mary, I ask that you pray for us in a special way tonight, that we can feel true and authentic joy through your Son. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now um, I have a little bit of a scripture reading I want to go through. So if you have your Bible, you can open it. Um, we're going to be reading First Thess Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Um, this is actually the second reading from Sunday. Um, so yeah, let's read it. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who, he, who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. I'm going to read it one more time just because it's a short reading. In the beginning, I really like. So rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give faith, thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. Okay. So now is a little reflection just on joy um, in general. I think it's really easy to see that there... There's a lot of sorrow in our world right now. This past year hasn't been easy or pleasant for anyone. I'm sure we've all experienced disappointments and sorrows that no one ever really prepared us for. We've experienced school getting canceled, proms, graduations, senior years of high school, holidays, weddings, birthdays. It seems like a never-ending list of disappointments. I think we can all count to at least 10 different events that we wish would have happened this year, but put it. As I was preparing for this reflection, I realized how hard it is to talk about the joy in our lives without thinking about all the sorrows. I haven't even began it and I've already listed and brought up all the disappointments we've had. But I know for me, this has been a really tough year in a lot of ways, more than just the pandemic been a lot of other things that have made it a tough year and I think I felt a lot more sorrow than I thought I would and I'm sure I wouldn't have believed you if you told me a year ago today how my senior year would have ended or how my freshman year of college looked like but even despite all this hurt and pain this year has brought there's also been an abundance of joy 
Even in the moments that seem so small and insignificant, I have found overwhelming joy. And I know that even despite everything that's going on, all the uncertainties, all the pain, more joy is coming. It's impossible to live a life without sorrow. Even though I know that there's going to be so much joy in my life, I also know that there's going to be a lot of sorrow. But this week of Advent is about all this joy that's coming. This third week of Advent can serve as a reminder to us to find joy in the light of all the pain and disappointments. We can celebrate all this joy while still knowing and understanding the pain as well. I know for me, sometimes I feel a little guilty about feeling happy or excited about things, especially right now. I think we're constantly bombarded by stats and statistics and death tolls and all these terrifying and heartbreaking things. I feel a little guilty for, for feeling happy. I felt guilty that I got to go live in the dorms and meet a bunch of new friends when I know that a lot of my own friends had to be home this semester. It's easy to feel that way. But even despite all that pain and hurt in this world, we can still find joy in our lives. So let's go back to the um, scripture passage we read today. Um, we are called to rejoice and pray, rejoice always and pray without ceasing. I'm going to read that, um, the first couple verses. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. Especially in this third week of Advent, those are extremely important to remember. The easy, we are called to rejoice in the midst of our sufferings and pray even when it's hardest to pray. The easiest and most sure way to find joy in those moments when it feels so hard to pray and when we're suffering in unmeasurable, in immeasurable ways is to look to God. And I know that in those tough moments, it's really, really hard to turn to God. And I know for me personally, the moments that I feel at my lowest, the last person I want to turn to is God. However, turning to God has never failed me. Not once. A few months ago, um, right after I began college, I hit like a really real, a really low point. I felt so stressed and discouraged about my classes and grades and the relationships that I was forming there and I was feeling homesick and I honestly had no idea what to do. I had all these feelings and all these things and it was hard to find moments to call friends or family back home and even in the, this really hard and difficult moment, I made myself turn to God. I really, I really didn't want to, if I'm being honest. I knew I should pray, but I was so caught in my hurt and I was so focused on all this pain and suffering that I didn't want to pray. And I made myself go to the chapel. I made myself pray and talk to him. Uh, I remember having this one, this conversation. I used my journal to pray. Um, and I, I think I sat there for over an hour and I just wrote out everything I was feeling and all the doubts and the anxiety that I felt. And it helped. It wasn't immediate, not by any sense. No one will say it's immediate. But the more I leaned on God, the more joy I began to feel. And it's been like that in other moments too. There's been other low and tough moments in my life. And the first prayer, the first Hail Mary, isn't going to magically fix you. It's not going to magically fix the world problems. But that prayer can help remind you to lean on God and find joy in that. Despite all the pain we feel, we can find joy through God. Right now, in this week of Advent, we are called to rejoice, even in our sufferings. I know this year of Advent looks extremely different than any other, and I know that it doesn't really feel like there's much to find joy in right now. I know a lot of us are typical Christmas traditions and celebrations aren't looking the same. Probably using Zoom when you never thought you'd use Zoom, but I know that we can still find moments to rejoice in. I know that there are still all these small little things that God is in and bringing us joy through. So let's take this week. Despite this uncertain and sorrowful world around us and rejoice. Let's truly rejoice in our coming savior. All right. So to end, I have a couple, 
just a couple of reflection questions. Um, you can just reflect on them yourself or if you want to pull out a journal and reflect um, prayerfully in that way. So the two um, I have is what in your life causes you to feel the most joy? And then how can you tangibly rejoice this week? What can you actually do to rejoice in God and find joy this week? Okay, thanks you guys so much for listening. Merry Christmas.